Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about application states. When you start your app, it gets initialized and built. But when you close it, it doesn't get completely disposed. Normally, you just push it back in the memory, it stays there inactive, and you can bring it back. That also means when you bring it back, it doesn't get freshly initialized and built, but just taken out of the freezer and put back on the screen. That means the information you're displaying might be outdated. So let's say you have an app that shows the latest Bitcoin or stock quotes. Uh, it will show the quotes from the last time it was opened. So you need to act on the event that you get when your app is brought back from the memory. In that case, you have to do some kind of modified initialization. So it depends really on your app. You might want to get updated information you might want to reinitialize a connection, something like that. Maybe you need to refresh a session. So there are a couple of events your app is getting. Let's look into these and how you can make use of them in your app. In Flutter, there are two classes that are important for this. One is the application lifecycle state. So here we see the different states your application can be in. Detached is the first one that is like a rare interim state when the application is still building up. More relevant is inactive, paused, and I guess the most important one, resumed. Resumed is the standard state when your application is on screen and acting on the input it gets from the user. When you get a call or you just push it back a little bit into the, this, uh, into the memory, it will be paused and when you move it away completely, it will be inactive. So the paused and inactive could be in, in very short order, one after the other. So you just start pushing it back, you push it back completely, it gets inactive. Or you push it back like on the iPhone and you change your mind and you bring it back to front, then it will be paused and back to resumed. So these are the important states your application is in. The second important class here for this is the widget binding observer. So you can extend this class in your application and register your class as an observer in the widget binding. So in the init state, you would add the widget binding add observer and in the dispose, you would remove the observer. And what this does for you is you can respond to the did change app lifecycle state method. So you can implement that in that class and you get the events pushed when the lifecycle state of your app changes. So when you listen to these events by adding an observer, what you can do is you can implement the did change app lifecycle state method and you can act on the events you get when the lifecycle state changes. There are also a couple other methods you can act on, but the most important, at least to me, would be the lifecycle state of the app. Let's have a look at an example in VS Code. So what I have here is a little lifecycle manager for my application. So what it does, it registers itself as an observer on the widget binding in the init state and removes itself in the dispose. So by that, it can get all the updates on the lifecycle state. Then I can implement the did change app lifecycle state method and act on that. The way I act on that in this example is very simple. I only listen to resumed and on any other state, I stop a service. So either in front or not in front, basically. Even though technically there are four states, I boil it down to two. And when it's resumed, that means the app is back in the foreground for the user I start all registered services. So within this lifecycle manager, I can have a list of services 
and these services would get a start notification and a stop when it's removed from the screen. So where do I use that? Um, you might want to look up my provider video. Uh, let's look at the main function of my app and I basically wrap it around the whole app. So this is my main dot dot uh, build function. So you see I have my material app which I wrap inside a multi-provider to do all the state management and that itself I also wrap inside the lifecycle manager. And here you see the services which I can use to register those classes that need to get an update on changes in the lifecycle state and these are available then throughout the application. And that way I can, for example, uh, re-establish a connection to a server when the application is brought back onto the screen and close that connection when I push back the application into the memory. Or I would also have enough time to, for example, say goodbye to the backend or do some final safe state methods and push that back to the either backend in the cloud or onto the device. That is already everything you need to manage the state of your application. So just widget binding observer and the lifecycle state. So enjoy and if you like this video, follow for more and have a great day.